Welcome aboard the BioTrain. In this video, we're going to talk about paper chromatography and the paper chromatography lab that we do to separate the pigments found in spinach leaves. So obviously, let's talk about the materials first. The main thing that you'll need is a piece of chromatography paper. You will also need a test tube to put the chromatography paper in. You'll need a cork to suspend the chromatography paper in the test tube. You'll need an Erlenmeyer flask, which we'll be using as a test tube holder. You'll need a pair of scissors to cut a point in the chromatography paper. And you'll also need, obviously, spinach leaves and some type of a coin to crush the pigment into the chromatography paper. And the last thing you'll obviously need is the chromatography solvent itself, which is nine parts petroleum ether and one part acetone. The first thing we want to do is get a piece of chromatography paper that is the right length to fit inside the test tube so that it goes all the way down to the bottom. You take the test tube, you insert the cork in the end, and then you hold up the piece of chromatography paper so it almost comes all the way up to the cork and extends all the way to the bottom of the test tube. Then you simply tear the piece of chromatography paper at that length. The next step is to cut the chromatography paper down a little bit. This particular chromatography paper is a little too wide. It needs to be able to easily slide inside of the test tube and this one's just a little too wide so what we're gonna do first is take about a quarter of an inch off the one edge of the piece of chromatography paper so now check to make sure that it slides nicely and easily into the test tube the next step is to cut a point in the end of the chromatography paper. This point will extend down to the bottom and the tip will be in the chromatography solvent. Now at this point you can go ahead and fit it to see how it's all going to work together. The way you do that is you put the chromatography paper on the paper clip hook and then put the whole piece of chromatography paper inside of the test tube and then check to make sure that the point is all the way down at the bottom. If you need to make some adjustments you can pull up on the paper clip a little bit to make some minor adjustments. The next step is to transfer the pigment from the spinach onto the chromatography paper. Now the big thing to be aware of is not to get the pigment down in this tip part that you cut in the chromatography paper. This part will go into the chromatography solvent and if the pigment is down here it'll just dissolve into the solvent. We want the pigment to be above the solvent and to be picked up as the solvent moves up the chromatography paper. So the best way to transfer the right amount is to take your spinach leaves. I like to take a little bit off, take the main veins in the middle off. It makes it a little easier to work with. And I work with smaller pieces at a time. I take a little piece and I kind of roll it a little bit so I have kind of a narrower, smaller piece that's easier to control. So what I do is I put the piece of spinach down above the point and I take a coin and I press that coin so that I crush the tissue of the leaf and in that way I'm releasing the pigments that are trapped that are in the chloroplast and they are being absorbed into the liquids of the leaf and then are ending up being absorbed into the chromatography paper. Now the more pigments you get in the chromatography paper the better. So do this a number of times. Now I found that it's very important to just bring the 
coin down on the paper like this. If you start rolling or scrubbing back and forth like this, you'll very quickly put a hole in the chromatography paper. And we do not want a hole in the chromatography paper. We just want to transfer the pigment to the chromatography paper. The more concentrated you can put the pigment, the better. If you spread it all over the place and down here and up here, it's not going to work as well. So try to keep the piece as concentrated as you can. If your one piece gets all smushed, you just grab another piece, roll up a little piece, and then add more. Once you've transferred enough pigment from the spinach leaf onto the chromatography paper, it will be a little wet because there's a lot of water in the tissue of the spinach leaf. You want to give it time to dry, either by putting it on a heater or leaving it on your desk until the water evaporates. When the chromatography paper has dried and all the water has evaporated, you're left with the pigment on the chromatography paper. You are now ready to run this paper by putting it in the test tube with some chromatography solvent. The next step is to put a little bit of chromatography solvent in the bottom of the test tube. You only need about a quarter of an inch because you only just need the tip of the chromatography paper to be in the solvent. Now you need to assemble the paper and put it in the tube so that the tip is touching the chromatography solvent. So you put your paper back on your paper clip and you slide it down into the tube until the tip is just touching. You want to make sure that the pigment is not touching the solvent. You want the pigment to be picked up by the solvent as it moves up the paper. Now you need to wait for the solvent to move up the chromatography paper and as it moves up it'll go past the pigment and pick up the pigments and move them up the paper. The reason the pigments separate is because they have different solubilities in the solvent so they move at different speeds. When the pigments move at different speeds they separate. Just like in a running race when all the runners start at the same point at the beginning during the race they spread out because they are moving at different rates. The last thing you want to do is allow the chromatography solvent to move up the paper until it's three quarters or more of the way up. Then you have to remove the paper or else the solvent will continue to move up and pull all the pigment up to the top. Once you've removed it, the pigments will stop moving and you'll be able to analyze your chromatography paper to see the different pigments. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but there are at least two different color greens here, which is chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. There's also some yellow and some orangey colors, which are carotenes and xanthophylls. I hope that was helpful.